Welcome to the Pure Victory Podcast, full of hot tips to help you win at sex, conquer porn, and find purpose in staying free forever. Here are your hosts, Matt Klein and Brad and Hafner. Hey, hey, welcome back to Pure Victory Podcast. Matt and Brad and Hey, everybody. <laughs> My brother-in-law was giving it to me yesterday. He said, Matt, I listened to your podcast recently. I haven't listened for a few months. And uh, he said, there's not as much oomph in your hey, hey, hey as there used to be. So, huh? I didn't notice that. Well, I didn't either. It's drift, right? Like you talk about family life. We just, I, I just drifted to a lower standard. Yeah. Of the hey, hey, hey. Well, you, you had some umph on that one because uh, honestly, it was a little loud on the ear set here. So, ears well, are bleeding, but we're gonna make it through. Hey, I, I like to be a learner. I got a rebuke <laughs> and I responded. So that's right. Mike, my brother-in-law, can be happy. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and here we're in our second episode of doing video. And um, if you're wondering, I own more than one shirt, as does Matt. Uh, <laughs> we're just, <laughs> I own two shirts, okay? But we're, we're shooting back to back, so there you I, go. I remember being a single guy. I, had, I Literally, I had five, maybe six shirts, and that was for all occasions. And Well, not dress shirts, but winter, <laughs> summer, spring. No, I had six shirts, five, six shirts. My my uh, my roommate, he was, he's, he's a funny guy. He would label his hangers. So like green shirt with white stripes, whatever. Like he'd put labels on his hangers, and so and all of his clothes, he knew where everyone went. Little OCD. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) exactly. Good guy, but um, but yeah, and so so he'd come to my closet. Like you got six shirts. Yeah, I don't need to hang. I don't need to label them. I I know where all of them go. I can (laughs) I can do it off memory, Brody. (laughs) I hope you own more than six pairs of underwear, though. Well, yeah. When I was single, <laughs> that marriage is good for me. <laughs> it is. It makes us better. Our hygiene game has stepped up since we got married. Hundred <laughs> oh, percent. In every way, I think in every way she makes uh-huh. me better. That's right. So yeah, this is funny, Louise. She's like, you have more clothes and more shoes than I do. I'm like, right. And who buys all of my clothes and my shoes? You. Right. She's the one that buys. <laughs> she just wants to present you. Wants you to look good. Exactly. I need more work than than, than she does. So. <laughs> Yeah, I need clothes to make me look good. She <laughs> she makes her clothes look good. That's how it works for us. So. <laughs> yeah, hey, uh, I I I love what we're talking about today. Why quitting porn is not a two to five year process, mm. and where this comes from is it's just various uh, just approaches and and um, other organizations that walk with people kind of kind of give this as a, a thing that they say. Uh, from the outset or from the onset or whatever, when they're first working with people is they just kind of put this out there. This is a two to three year process. That's the two to five year process of getting free and of working through this stuff. And, and so there's some, some, we know, we understand why they say it. Yeah, that's for sure. And we want to give some context to that because I got a question recently. um, Hey, you know, I heard this other ministry say it's a two to three year process to quitting porn what do you say about that? And I just said to the person, man, like I, I never say that because I could tell you countless stories of people that we've worked with where it's like they come in and from day one, they never go back to porn or within four months they, they're free and then they last, they last for years. And so what's this process look like over two to three years, two to five years? Uh, we want to really highlight that because if you've heard that message, sometimes it can be like, okay, if I, as long as I sin a little bit less than I did last month, then I'm on this two mm-hmm. to three, two to five year process and I'm doing well. And sure, we love growth, but we also know that in scripture, Bible says, die to your sin, crucify the flesh, crucify the desires of the flesh. And he doesn't say just do it over time. He's mm-hmm. like, he wants every day. He wants us to pick up our cross, deny ourselves follow him and so we don't want this this uh, mindset around quitting sin which is serious in the eyes of god to just go well i i, I guess i can just sin a little bit less over the next few years and mm-hmm. then i'm on the right path mm-hmm. um and so yeah it, this is a good a good i think clarification process uh, or episode that we're going to go through to just bring clarification on this process and and i want to say too a lot of different ministries out there um they're led by really really good people and we all have different backgrounds and a lot of um, ministries are led by therapists and christian therapists and so where they're coming from is a lot of the brain science and the the research in that where things do take time and so i understand that um no no ministry including ours is is perfect but um but just we want to bring clarification to that because sometimes it might not even be the way that 
a ministry or a person says it, but the way that it's received to some, by somebody is like, oh, okay, so this is a two to three year process of getting free of porn. And so, um, so yeah, I just want to throw that out there with give some context and, and understanding, mm-hmm. but also just communicate that we don't think that we're just better than other people. No, um, no, no. because we don't give this message. No. Um, and and so yeah, yeah, we're not we're not standing here being like we're debunking something here. That's not what we're doing today. We are, uh, like Matt said, we're giving clarification, we're giving context. And yes, because the receiver often when hearing something like this, this messaging, uh, if taken out of context or understanding or having full clarification, it can be harmful uh, if you if you don't fully understand what that means and what actually the process of healing is. And so that's why we need to talk about this today because yeah, you can kind of get stuck into specificities of a certain amount of time frames or what this looks like. Cause I mean, what does that mean? Like five years, you're free. Like, what does that mean? Cause that could mean to a lot of different things to a lot of different people. For some that have gone down the idea of strictly sobriety is my marker and that's harmful in of itself. Sobriety is part of, but not the whole thing. But if that's the, the, the goalposts, Hey, sobriety, then that's, that's a harmful thing really is because sobriety is just the surface level. Um, we need to go deeper than that. We need to get to the roots. So if someone just believes it's just a surface level behavior, their healing journey is going to, uh, look like that. So they're going to strictly be doing behavior modification and put an expectation on their time frame of when they're going to hit that sober kind of marker. And so that's harmful. I'm not saying that sobriety is important. It is a part of this, but like I said, it's just a single part. And, and the other end too, is if you hear the five year or two to five year, that can also be self-defeating in a, in the sense that, well, I have a large amount of time. I can do it tomorrow. <laughs> I, I procrastinate all the time. I don't know. I'll put my hand up to that. Everybody. I struggle here. My wife tells me and helps me with this all the time, but you can do that here. You begin to procrastinate. I have five years to get this done. I know that people maybe intuitively wouldn't say that out loud or speak that, but sometimes our beliefs go deeper than what we're saying. And, you know, you might say, no, I don't, that's not what I'm, what I'm thinking here, but that's the, what your behavior is reflecting. So that's why it's important to have context of understanding what our healing journey and process is, uh, instead of putting a specific thing on there, because at the other end too, if you hit five years and you're not doing well, what happens then? <laughs> right. Uh, so we, we, that's why it's important to give a full breadth of understanding clarification about, about this. Yeah, hundred percent. And so if we if we have this mindset of hey, it's a two to five year process. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it fast, like in two years. I'm gonna beat that. I'm <laughs> right. in 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 a year and eleven months. I'm yeah. gonna go yeah. fast. I'm gonna be done my porn addiction. I've been asking a lot of people lately. When's the last time? What are you looking for? Because if in if in your mind you haven't yet quit porn, even though it's been a few weeks since you've watched porn. You're, you're opening the door to watching porn again in the future. Mm-hmm. And so when's the last time? I had to ask myself that when I was 21 years old. I said, if, if I'm going to quit, there's got to be a last time. And so there was a last time, right? Then I fell back into porn again, but then there was another last time. It's like if you're opening the door to watching it where you're just like, oh, I'm in this process of quitting porn, it's, it's not helpful, but it's also not biblical at all. Biblically, God says, die to it. Like crush the sin, die to it. It actually says, it's interesting, it says if you sin. It never says in scripture when you sin because there's not an expectation of sinning. It's we are imperfect and God understands that and there's grace, but it says if you sin. And so it's this like like if, like if you happen to fall into it because the expectation is you're living the spirit-led life full of the direction and, and love that God has for you. And so this expectation that if you're going to quit, if you're going to go fast, I'm going to beat it in under, in under two years. You're like Brad said, you're letting yourself off the hook. Like, oh, I can start tomorrow. I can just take it easy for a little bit. And on the other side, though, if you understand that a two to five year process is, it really has to do with the emotional healing, healing the heart, growing in who you are in Christ. That's more accurately what the two to five year process is. But Brad and I would say this at the end of five years, are you done? You're not done. No. <laughs> like healing the heart, sanctification, all of that, like becoming more like Christ and becoming a better person and healthier. That's a lifelong thing. That's not a five year process. No. And so a two to five year process, when I was considering like, well, what is valid with the two to five year process or message that people give? And I would say this is that in my experience and with and with others too, 
A two to five year time frame gives a really good time frame for understanding some basic things on what it takes to then walk out a lifestyle of pursuing wholeness in Christ and, and a lifestyle of pursuing health in our heart. Because over two to five years, you're, you're going to understand a lot. If you go on this healing journey, you're going to learn a ton. We've had people go through Pure Freedom Journey now for almost three years. And people, they're watching it. Even I listen to things again. I'm like, oh, man, I, I needed to hear that. And it's this process of learning. You learn things over and over. And the, the, the longer you go, the better in terms of your healing. But it's, it's developing keys within a two- to five-year time frame. You're developing keys and principles and the best practices for that healing so that you can now understand how to walk out this lifestyle of, of healing and of growing in Christ and healing the heart and staying free from sin every day. So it's a, I would say the most accurate way to say it's a two- to five-year process is talking about learning the basics of what it looks like to be healthy. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that you're ultimately healthy and then you're done. That means now you know what to do when hard situations come or when you experience trauma or loss down the road or when you do screw up and you stumble into sin of any kind. You know how to get out of that so it doesn't become habitual. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of more accurately what, what a, a multi-year process would be. But even with that, honestly, that's a lifelong thing. Mm-hmm. We're going to learn things 20 years from now that we didn't yeah. learn two years from now. And so we always have to learn this or have this mindset of learning and just like I'm right. going to continually be learning. And that's why we just caution against putting a time frame on things, right. both from the or the quick, like two years, and also the long end, like five years. I, I, I just don't think it's healthy, really. It's not the healthiest approach. Yeah, I know. That's, that's such a great point. And it's important to understand that because like what happens in, say, year seven, and you have a moment of of relapse or you say look at that girl walking down the street you all of a sudden feel defeated because no longer in your mind are you healed you start to believe some things about yourself out of that that the enemy jumps on um, if you think it's only stuck to a certain time frame five years i hit my markers now i'm good i'm good for the rest of my life if you have that mindset you're not pushing into Jesus the way that you should be because we are on a journey with him. He's walking with us for the rest of our lives. And there are going to be moments where we need to really push in and really lean on him. I mean, we always need to be do that. But what I mean by that is there's moments where we're not doing well. There's moments where we're doing great. There's times where new things have been brought to the surface of our life because we're in a new season. Um, there's new pressures, new stresses, and we haven't encountered them yet before, even in that two to five year point, new things come up. So that's why it's important. You have the mindset of an ongoing thing. And that's not to say, Oh, I'm never going to be free from porn. No, but we are all, all Christ followers all across the breadth of history are on a journey in life of healing and becoming more like Jesus. So until the day we breathe our last, we're going to be doing that. And that's important to understand. And and even at the same time, in that two to five year thing, there's some benefit to understanding some things as well. And that, I mean, the brain science component of it as well, that can be helpful for us because sometimes when we're battling porn, we prayed a lot and we have white knuckled it. We've done all the things we think we're doing. And that's where they say you're trying harder and all the wrong things. Um, not that prayer's wrong. I'm just saying sometimes the way we pray or what we do, we're still in isolation. God, I don't want to talk to this person, but I'm going to pray every day that you take porn from me. And Jesus is like, you got to be in the light. You got to be in community. You got to reveal what's going on. Don't want to do that. I'll keep praying, but I don't want to do that. So that's what white knuckling it is. You're doing, you're trying harder in all the wrong places. And so sometimes when we're doing that, we have beliefs about our battle, about ourselves, about the journey. We think we can't get free. We think it's strictly a shame, like in shame, we believe something's wrong with me. I can never get free. Or you believe, well, I'm not spiritual enough. I don't know Jesus enough. You say all those things without fully understanding, hey, there's components and layers to us. There's a spiritual aspect, the emotional aspect, but we also have the physiological aspect. And that's why the two to five years, it actually helped me to understand the physiological component that, hey, there's actually some brain chemistry stuff that I need to learn here to rewire my brain and learning different behaviors and adding good behaviors. That takes time. Um, But again, we can't impose timeframes on that because (laughs) sometimes we add a great behavior to our life for a season, but then we go back. So we have to keep working at this. Um, Same thing, unlearning a behavior, that takes time, especially when we're talking about our coping mechanisms. We have 
a lot of breadth of, of layer to that. I mean, we cope in a lot of different ways, right? So um, some things are exposed at certain points in life. Um, it could be well past the two to five year mark that um, about how we cope. Um, it can be how we cope emotionally, how we cope in different things. And we don't know that necessarily in, in some of those time frames. And that's why it's important. Hey, this is just a guidepost for us of understanding there's a process. But what Matt and I are saying to you is that the process does never, it never ends. <laughs> and that's that I hope that that's hopeful to you yeah. in the sense that, Hey, Jesus doesn't leave us when five years are done <laughs> or does he does not pat us on the back and say, okay, you're perfect. Now go out into the world, right? No, he's, I'm with you every step of the way. I'm here for you. And you're going to become more like me as you learn to walk with me, as you learn my rhythms, as you learn to connect to me, abide in me, um, and seek me. Um, he's going to really show you what that means throughout your life. And it's not going to end at any one point. So that's why we, you need context to this. And I, I just want to, you know, that, that verse, I talked about abide and, uh, this is a great, I mean, we, Matt and I both love the verse here and this is, but it's, uh, in uh, John 15, 4 to 9, when he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. So some key things I'll pick up on there is the word abide. Abide in Greek means meno. Meno, if you don't know this, the New Testament was written in Greek. Um, meno uh, means to remain, stay, or continue. And that's important to understand. I think there's an author here, Brian Hedges. He fills us out even more. He says uh, three key things about that. Connection, dependence, and continuance. That's what it means to abide in Jesus, is connecting to him, being dependent upon him, and continuing in all those things. So when we abide in Jesus, what I reason I bring this up is because this is a process of learning so our healing is a process of learning. Learning to connect to Jesus is a process. And I'm still learning. Matt's still learning. Like, we don't have this all figured out. But we sure are trying in connecting, depending, and continuing on in that as much as we can and surrendering to God in that. Yeah, absolutely. It, that that was really good. Um, you talk about John 15. Just a cool little side story came to mind. It's just a fun one, so I'll share. But it was, uh, it was five years ago I was speaking at this camp for the first time called uh, Moose Lake Pentecostal Camp. I'd never been there, but I'd always heard, like, man, when thing, when people go there, like, they encounter God. And I'm like, oh, cool. And so I went there, and I was preaching. And the night before um, the night before I was speaking, I, I had my sermon prepped for the next morning. And uh, and then I went to bed, and all night long, it wasn't a dream, but I just kept hearing my in my head, remain in my love, remain in my love, remain in my love, just over and over. And uh, I woke up in the morning and I was like, I kind of dawned on me like, oh man, I, I heard that phrase all night. And so I, I went to Google because I didn't, didn't know at that time uh, which chapter it was in. So I went to Google, uh, where is Remain in My Love? And, I, and then my phone, I think it was out of data or out of service or something out in the boonies. And so I'm like, well, I guess I could just pray. And so I pray, where, where is that? And John 15 came to mind. So I opened up John 15 and it was the first words I saw, Remain in My Love. So I preached on that and then, it was a few years later, I was back at same camp, and I was trying to remember this one verse in Exodus, and I thought it was in Exodus 2 or 3, but I didn't have my um, my Bible with me, and so I just prayed, and I said, God, where's that verse? And it just came to mind, Exodus twenty twenty one. I'm like, oh, okay. I went back to my cabin, and I looked in Bible, and it was Exodus twenty twenty one. so hmm. I was I was wrong on that one, but it, yes, that's cool. Like, remain in his love, abide in him. He really can speak and lead you, and so those times are pretty cool because you get these fun stories, and I think that the key there really is remaining in him, abiding in him, and learning his voice, and learning just, like, I, I didn't know when I heard that one about Exodus the second time. I'm like, I don't know. I feel like that was me. I didn't know if that was, that, if that was God. But he teaches you in these things when you do abide in him. Or he teaches you what it looks like to handle temptation in different ways. And and the thing is, too, with, with our enemy, he'll wait for an opportune time to come and tempt us. And so it might be years. Like, literally, it might be 10, 20 years before he comes and tempts us with, say, a sin of our youth. And so we need to constantly be abiding in Jesus and knowing what that looks like. And that's not just a five-year process. That's a lifelong thing of continually every day seeking him. Every, everyone's journey is different, right? Like journey to 
quitting sin is different. Journey journey to intimacy with Jesus is different. Every, everyone's journey to heart health is different. And so we don't want to compare to other people. Yeah. Putting someone in a box or putting everybody in a box, that this is a two to five year process, it's not healthy. We had a doctor on our podcast a couple of years ago, Dr. Ted Fenske, and you guys can go look him up on podcast apps. There was no video then, but but he talked about a 90-day process to renewing mm-hmm. the mind. Mm-hmm. And so a 90-day process, there's like the first 30 days it does this, then the 30, day 31 to 60 does yeah. this, and then the third month it does it does the the third thing. Yeah, the neural uh, pathways were, yeah. new neural pathways are created, old ones were dying off. Yeah, yeah and it was with dopamine and delta yeah. Fos B and, and right. those getting restored. And so... That's a 90 day time frame. But the thing with that is that's that's perfect. Like if you're not engaging in anything that's outside of, of how your brain um, needs to operate. And so in that time frame, if you do go back into sin a couple of days, well, that's going to extend the process. If you go back in for a week, that's going to extend the process even more. And so it might be a four and a half month process to renewing the mind. It could be a five-year process. It could be a 20-year process if you're constantly going back. And so everyone's journey is different, and we don't want to compare, and we don't want to put ourselves in a box and go, oh, my gosh, it's been three years, and now I'm I'm only here. Mm-hmm. And so be at peace with the journey uh, that you're on as long as you're pursuing Jesus and pursuing heart health. But also don't be at peace with just a little bit less sin than you've mm-hmm. had in the past. Mm-hmm. Like you could be encouraged with that, but – Man, like we're we're supposed to we we got to turn away from this. Like we got to actually repent of our sin and turn away from it. We need to understand how dirty it is and offensive in light of a holy God and in light of how He made us. And we need to turn from that and every single day be praying and worshiping and learning this stuff when we're when we're tempted and be determined to not engage in this because it's not. It's not healthy for us. It's not good for us. And so why would we want to eat just a little bit less mud every day? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Like I used to eat two liters of mud. Now it's yeah. only half a liter every day. <laughs> That's better. Like why Why would you even want any? And so we got to have that mindset, um, not of, hey, I'm growing a little bit, but like, no, I'm going to die to myself every day. And that's where I think Romans 12 is important and not be conformed to the way of the world it, and because that is the, 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 there's a certain time frame and you just work on your behaviors a little bit, modify what you're doing. And Jesus like, no, quit it. Like mm-hmm. quit today. Right. Um, one of my leaders was joking. He doesn't say, doesn't say just slowly back away over time from sexual temptation. <laughs> right. It says flee sexual temptation mm-hmm. or sexual immorality. Jesus doesn't say to the woman who's caught in adultery, right? Like, Hey, go and just over the next few years, just sin a little bit less. She, he says, no, go and sin no more. Yeah, yeah. And so we need to have this mindset of, I'm not going to do this anymore. And I'm going to be on a lifelong journey of healing and growing more in Jesus. Right. Yeah, and hear this. You are no longer a slave to sin. Now, what does that mean? That means that, I mean, in the past, we lived in this uh, unaware, unknowing, and we fell in step with whatever that sin was calling us to do. We were enslaved to it. We lived for it. Um, now we are enemy to sin. What does that mean? That's a stance. You are firm, fully against that. So how is that revealed in your life? Like, because sometimes when we, we think, well, you know, I've heard you say, Brad and Matt, you know, you got to clean your house. And what, what do we mean by that? Well, you get rid of any access point you have to porn. And we always say that it's not about behavior modification. You just got to get it out of your house. Like remove the access as much as you can. And you'll say, well, hey, I got a five-year journey here. You know what? Tomorrow, tomorrow I'll put stuff on my devices. Tomorrow you know what, tomorrow that's when I'm going to actually go remove those links that I have in my phone that I have saved to my favorite porn sites. Tomorrow I'll do that, right? Because, hey, it's a five-year journey. No, you are now an enemy to sin. So that means that you are in the midst of a battle. And in that battle, you can either be fighting or you can lay your sword down and just let the enemy have his way with you. So you have to take a stance. And often people say, well, you hit kind of rock bottom before you really are like, okay, no more. I am not having enough of this, you know, and, and I would just say to you, like, my hope for you is you don't have to hit rock bottom. My hope for you is today you make that stance. I am not going to be enslaved to this. I know that I'm not a slave to this because of what Jesus did for me. Now I'm going to get in the fight. I'm going to get in the fight. And I, today doesn't have to be the day that I'm living out of that, that slavery anymore. I can actually pick up my sword. I can clean my house if that's what you need to do. I can 
you know, in the midst of temptation, pray. I can run and flee from the temptation instead of slowly back away. <laughs> um, and so that's the stance you should take. Like, take that stance. And with God's help, he works through that and in that. And um, and that, that's really important because we can get really with lackadaisical, you know, with some of this stuff. You know, we just kind of allow it in our life. It's just kind of present and we, we don't really think much of it. And um, we, again, we have layers to this sometimes, you know, I remember when I was in the midst of uh, my healing uh, at a certain point, I should say, but God really convicted me about all these movies I owned. Right. And I remember this is the dance I did guys. Okay. This is what I did. Okay. I'm going to get rid of that movie. Cause it's really blatant. Like there's a full on sex scene in that movie. I love the movie. It's great. Aside from that movie, that part. So I know that one's bad, but then there were some other ones, some other movies, I remember one in particular. Well, there were some scenes where there were some girls in bikinis and stuff, and they were, you know, it's a comedy, so it's okay, right? Like, it, that one's not as bad, right? That's not as bad, so I'm just going to allow that one in my life. The other one, no, that one's too bad. That's too blatant. I know that one's bad. But this one, eh, you know, it's gray. It's gray area, right? You know, I just can just fast forward at that point. Gray area. So that's what I'll do. And then and then I got convicted again by the Holy Spirit. No, you got to take those movies, all of them, toss them out, get rid of them. And that's, I had to realize like, look, I could do that dance for a long time. And that's just going to prolong so many things happening in my life. Because if you allow some of these things in our life, we're making it hard on ourselves. We are shooting ourselves in the foot. And that's why it's important that like what Matt was talking about, we take that stance. We don't have to allow this in our life in the point where, what I mean is that today's the day you can make that choice. Um, you can take that stance now and you don't have to keep moving in these areas. You can stop. Um, it's worth God, God's help in these things and, and the Holy Spirit guides you. But what's the choice that you're making in this? And that's really key. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I remember um, this this guy that was asking me recently involved in a different ministry. Like they said it was a two, th- two to three to process. It's been three years I've been involved and I'm not even close to being free. And I just, I actually really, really felt sad for him because I looked at another guy that we've worked with for almost three years and that guy quit porn in four months after being involved with Pure Freedom Journey. It took him four months and now it's been two and a half years free and he's leading other men. And there's a difference, right? And there's certainly other guys with Pure Freedom who haven't quit porn in four months and there's other people who quit cold turkey and then they've just grown and then they've led multiple groups. And I remember a guy that was 30 years addicted and from day one, pure freedom. He, well, a couple of years later, he went back once when he drank a little bit too much. And I was like, buddy, like maybe that's showing you why you shouldn't be drinking like yeah. that too. But, uh, but that was his one screw up in three years after a 30 year addiction and from day one in pure freedom journey. And I'm just glad that it wasn't this approach of it's a two to five year process and just quits in a little bit on, along the way because these guys are so much further ahead than they would they, than they would have been if the standard was lower and so it's important for for us to realize that man this is an urgent urgent thing and you have an option you have the possibility and the ability in the lord to quit these things and um, i remember there was a guy that that uh, this is just more recently but he was talking to me about being involved in different deliverance ministries and he had sought deliverance from this ministry and that ministry and needed a little bit more deliverance from certain things. And and we just had to talk about the importance of renewing the mind and, and having that approach. And he got involved with a, with a group, with Pure Freedom. And, and after the first month, he came on a call and I was there and he said, man, this is the first month I've been masturbation free in mm. like forever since I started masturbating. And it's amazing. And so it, it's not just, hey, let's wait to be delivered of something. It's let's change the way we think. Let's maybe change our approach. Let's learn biblically what the Bible says about this. And we really can quit and, and then go on a journey, a lifelong journey of healing. Mm-hmm. But we can quit and you can do that. And so if you're listening and you're or watching and you're going, oh, that's different. I didn't realize I could. Are you going to now give yourself the permission to say no? Give yourself the permission to realize you're more than a conqueror in Christ. You're no longer a victim. Like Braden said, you're no longer a slave. You're not a slave to this. If Jesus, if the Holy Spirit is in you, you're not a slave to it. In fact, it's your slave. And you have power in him to conquer this, to say no to your urges 
and uh, and to steward those well. So it's a it's not a two year time frame to quit a behavior, but it's also not just a five year time frame to pursue health and and intimacy with Jesus. So we hope that that's encouraging for you when you hear that. Mm, yes, we do, and we're in your corner wherever you're at, uh, whatever's going on today for you. We're praying you on, we're cheering you on, and I just can continue to remember that that connect to Jesus, depend upon Him, and continuing in that. Um, that's really key. You know, no matter what happened yesterday, no matter, no matter what happened today, continue connecting to him and depending upon him uh, in this journey. And um, that should never end for us. And so I charge that to you. We charge that to you. We encourage you in that and uh, bless you all. Thank you guys for listening. Hope this was impactful. Please share um, with friends, family, whoever, coworkers. <laughs> um, love to get the word out there more as we just walk in this journey with you of growing in our health and growing in our connection to Jesus as we, we kick porn right in the teeth. And that's really the goal. So bless you guys and thank you so much. Thanks for listening. If you would like to hear more, please visit purevictorypodcast.com to subscribe. This podcast was made possible by the generous donations of our subscribers. If you would like to help support the cause financially, once again, please visit purevictorypodcast.com.